Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to make a griddled Reuben sandwich and we're going to do it on the Burl King. I know I haven't made too many um, videos on that Burl King, but I use it all the time. I just use it for everyday stuff, no real recipe. So this is my first recipe I'm going to do on that. Um, now for a Reuben, a really good Reuben, you need five things to come together. You need a fresh, good marble rye which I had the Publix Bakery make this for me today. Um, called ahead this morning and they had it ready by one. Uh, so that's awesome. And a nice shout out to uh, Publix for making me some fresh um, marble rye. You also need a good Swiss cheese. This is the Boar's Head uh, mild Swiss cheese. I did not want it to be too overpowering. The regular um, Swiss cheese is pretty strong. I've also got some sauerkraut. Um, this is the boar's head sauerkraut. We're going to rinse that lightly. And you need some good corned beef. Of course, we have the leftover corned beef from the corned beef dinner. If you didn't see that video, that turned out completely excellent. As you can see, that's all I had left. Um, and really, it was hard to save that. That could have all been eaten in one night between me and my brother. So that was a really good recipe. Be sure to check that out. But what's left over, I'm going to try to reheat that. And I don't want to um, dry it out. So I'm going to show you my little uh, um, simmering method. It's almost like a poor man's, poor man's uh, sous vide method uh, of reheating that so it doesn't dry out at all. It stays moist and tender. And you need a good resting dressing. Now, I'm going to make this myself. You could use like Thousand Island. The only problem uh, with Thousand Island dressing that... Um, and I'll show you how to make this. We'll go over the ingredients for that too. Uh, the only problem with uh, Thousand Island uh, dressing is that I think it's a little too sweet and a little too runny. So for this dressing, we're going to use um, ketchup. We're going to use some uh, real mayonnaise. We're going to have some chopped pickles. We're going to have a splash of uh, Lee and Perrins. We're going to have a tablespoon of... Um, chopped up shallot, and just a pinch of salt, not too much salt. And I'm going to show you how to put that together um, uh, to start. So let me get that ready. Okay, so um, basically what you want to do is just do, it doesn't matter what size you do, you just do one part, two part, or three part. You could call this, this is almost a tablespoon, but this is just going to be one part. So I'm going to do three parts mayonnaise and you can adjust this the way you want it's not it's not a dead set recipe but that's three parts right there and then one part ketchup so there's your one part ketchup And you're going to do two parts, pickle, just diced up pickle which is most of what I cut here. I'll put the rest in. And then one part shallot. Again, pretty much what I cut. I kind of knew what I was going to end up with. Okay, so there's the main ingredients of the uh, sauce and now you just want a pinch of salt when I say a pinch that's it uh, just one small pinch a uh, pinch of dill which is I guess about a teaspoon maybe a half that's probably about a half teaspoon that just kind of gives it color obviously it's going to taste like dill anyway um, because of the pickles the dill pickles so and just a splash of Lee and Perrins just a splash And then you just want to whisk that around and mix it up. Now, if you can, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and make this ahead of time, like I did, um, and put it back in the fridge and let it sit. Let the flavors meld a little bit, 
and let it uh, get a little thicker. Again, see that's just a lot thicker than our a dressing would be. I don't want it too runny and all falling off the uh, uh, sandwich. I want it to stay put um, and not drip off the sides. So that's kind of why I make my own. So there you have it. Um, again, like I said, I'm going to put that in the fridge, but I already have some made up from before that's been sitting. As a matter of fact, I made it yesterday. So um, it'll be ready to go. So I'll get you right back. I'll be right back for the next step. Okay, so now I'm going to get the uh, corned beef ready. And like I said, that's left over from the other night. Um, turned out really good. So now what we want to do is reheat this without drying it out. So I'm going to cut this about a quarter inch, a little less than a quarter inch thick. Slices here. I kind of like them a little thinner. Not quite sure how much is going to fit on there. That one's kind of thick. Set that one aside. So I guess that's about an eighth of an inch thick. Alright, so now I've done this. I tried to put this on the uh, grill, on the griddle, and warm it up normally, but it really didn't work. It just dried out. Uh, same with uh, sliced corned beef that you get from the deli. Um, that didn't work either. So what I'm going to do here is this boil in a bag method. Uh, what they refer to as sous vide. I'm going to get one of those. Uh, get a real sous vide cooker pretty soon and do some recipes with it. But until then, I'm just going to do this sort of cheaper version. Um, what I'm going to do is just put that in there. And I might even put a few spoonfuls of uh, the sauce that it was. That it was cooking in. So I put in a little sauce there just to sort of keep it moist. And what I'm going to do, let me move it over here. Is I have this on simmer it's about 180 degrees or so and all I have here is just two chopsticks and some little gem clips little paper clips that uh, uh, and what I'm gonna do is just sort of immerse this in the water this will help it uh, put out all the air and once all the air is out I'm gonna seal it up And put it in between the chopsticks here. And then just put this clip on the other end to keep it up. And I'm going to let it warm like that. It actually doesn't even need to go back on the heat. I'm just going to let it set off to the side there. And I'm going to get the griddle heated up here and get uh, the rest of the sandwich ready to go. Okay, so you can slice this uh, as thick or as thin as you want it. I like to go about a half inch thick. You can also have them slice it for you, but I like to sort of adjust my sandwich size. I really messed up that cut. Um, let me get another one. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so there's the marble rye. And now, what you need, and I probably should have mentioned this before, but hopefully you watched the whole video before. Uh, but you need some softened butter. And what you want to do is you don't want to butter both sides, this side and this side, like this. You want to kind of flip it so they match. 
and this will be the uh, outside of the sandwich and this is the part that's going to go on the grill All right, so there you go, and looks like the grill is just about ready. So let's get the cheese. Get that ready to go on. Now this cheese will melt because I'm going to be putting hot items on top of both sides of the bread so don't worry about the cheese not melting plus it'll be on the griddle so I'm gonna go ahead and um, probably move the camera over to the griddle so I got the griddle heated up at 300 I don't want it much hotter than that. It does get hotter until you start putting food on there. So lay your Of course, you can do this any way you want. You can even toast it or put it on a in a pan and uh whatever. Bake it. I don't like a baked sandwich. I don't think that's I think it should be griddled just like this either in a pan or on a on a griddle like this okay and then now what I'm gonna do is just strain a little uh, sauerkraut it's just a little too strong so I give it a quick rinse Then throw it right on the grill. The meat is ready. Just going to take it out of the bag and lay it on top of the cheese. Ooh, a little hot. I'm going to use some tongs for that. And it's a little moist, so I had to drain it, let it drip a little bit first. All right, so there we go. Give the uh, just trying to get that um, sauerkraut warmed up, and I got to get to grab the sauce from the fridge. All right, so the sauerkraut is on, and we're going to put the dressing right on top of the meat. And very carefully, we're just going to Whip that over. 
All right, there it is. Uh, let me clear a spot for it and get it on the cutting board. Okay, so there we have it. Let me go ahead and uh, mount the camera. We'll cut into it. Alright, there you go. An authentic classic Reuben sandwich um, on the Broil King. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you give it a try and thanks for watching.